let's take a look at some of the new features inside of Premiere Pro. First up, one of the things I absolutely love is this brand new workspace called Color Correction. This makes it super easy to work with clips. For example, let's just twirl down the basic correction here, and you'll notice I can do something like click Auto, and Auto actually does a good job finally. That's one of the things I love is the ability to quickly make that fix. And we can dial in the saturation. It's a very nice saturation slider. Notice how it brings out it quite rich, but doesn't overdo it. That's really quite nice. And of course, the ability to dial in white balances or even access a custom lookup table. For example, this is a GoPro, and uh, I can dial in a preset there for that GoPro just to fix it. Let's go ahead and select this next clip and just toss on that GoPro profile. And you'll notice it does a nice job of fixing some of the contrast issues right away. Then with a quick auto balance, we're looking pretty savvy. So I love how easy this is to make a quick fix. These built-in camera input LUTs are awesome. The ability to assign a profile to the camera and that just goes in and does a quick fix. There I could push it a little cooler or a little warmer. I actually prefer the cool here since we're deep under the water. And let's just do an auto balance on that, bring up the exposure, it's really quite awesome. Now besides the basic corrections, you'll find the ability here to make curves adjustments, and you can do that on a per channel basis. For example, I can lower the blues there in the highlights and raise them a bit in the shadows. A great new tool down here to manipulate the different areas. For example, let's just go after just the blues and punch that up a little bit. That's pretty awesome. I'll take the reds there and just warm that a bit. And it's really awesome how quickly we can go in and make these sorts of adjustments. New color wheels, and one of my favorites, a very savvy and gentle vignette tool that allows for nice feathering and the ability to really shape that vignette. And remember, all of this stuff is still available over here under effects if you need to. It allows you to see it and what's going on, but it's pretty cool how quick and fast that is. All right, another thing related to color, maybe you've heard about it, is Candy. And what we're seeing is the ability to use a new mobile app from Adobe. You'll be able to create LUTs on your mobile device, which is pretty awesome. And then if you go into Windows Extensions Libraries, these are going to start to actually synchronize with your device. So what will happen here is it will pull it down and do the sync they'll appear here in your library and you can drag them. This is brand new, I'm just getting access to these tools now, so we'll have that soon. But in the meantime, there's also all of these great preset LUTs that we have here. So we can start to punch up the dynamic range. It's really intense there. Let's go with a little something softer here, like a nice Kodak look. And I love this, I've been asking this forever, a simple intensity slider, the ability to boost or back something off and then really refine that a little bit more. So we've got some great tools in here and you can even browse and just quickly apply different looks and see what they're gonna look like there. Makes it really simple to dial that in and then pull up the intensity to get just what you want. A great interface here for both preset looks and the ability to create your own with that Project Candy which is gonna be coming soon which is pretty cool. All right, another thing is captions. I am a huge fan of making video accessible. So here's a commercial we worked on for clients a while back, and I've already added the caption track. We've covered this inside of some of our other lynda.com tutorials. And what you'll see is, is that captions are now available. And you can put that in, and let's just check our caption settings here. We've enabled the closed captions, caption display. Let's check the settings and I'm using 608 captions here for my client, and there they are. Remember, you've got all sorts of controls here, so you can edit that, change the background color of the captions as you work on them, that's great. But what I want is the ability to take this to the web to make the video more accessible, or to do a burn-in. And that's what we have now. Under File, Export, Media, this is the ability here under Captions, not only can we create a sidecar file or embed them in the video, we can actually burn them into the output. And what this is gonna do when you make the new file and you export it, it's gonna allow that to actually keep the captions in the movie and send it out with the file. 
uh, it's going to be really cool so that you can get that burn in and it's a great addition that makes video more accessible which is very important these days that more people can see and consume your content and it's just the right thing to do uh, another thing that's coming out is a cool cut or a transition called a morph cut take einstein seriously about space time i think it also forces us to rethink death for example maybe i want to take out this little fumble the there we go and I've marked that range. What you'll find under the effects panel is a new effect called a morph cut. And this allows you to essentially create a morphed transition. Now it's gonna analyze and sometimes it needs to be a little bit longer so it doesn't feel so abrupt. So if needed, you can always select that effect, double click, sometimes make it a little bit longer. And it's gonna analyze the effect and then create it. It's a lot like the warp stabilizer and how it has to analyze. So once that analysis is done, it's ready to go. So forces to rethink death. When I was you see it did a morph there. Now this is a moving shot, still not too bad. Soften that cut. Sometimes you'll find that by playing with the position of the effect might work a little better. So forces to rethink. Let it analyze really quick. It's got to look at those surrounding frames. Again, one of the things that's nice about this analysis is it only analyzes the frames you've selected, so it doesn't have to do the whole clip. It also forces us to rethink death. When I Interesting how that did that move. It's something that's going to continue to get better. And let's take a look at one more sequence here. Here's another example. I'm just going to cut a bit out. Because let's face it, you're... There we go. Let's get that gap out of there. Toss on that morph cut. This is a handheld camera, so a bit shakier. And this is not the sort of thing that's perfect, but it is a great way to hide a transition when you're scarce on B-roll or you need to make something work. The lighting industry is a fascinating industry to work sort of creating a And you look. see there that it handled that move. Pretty cool how it was able to put that all together and transition the clips together and make a smoother cut rather than it being super abrupt. So this is something I'm going to continue to experiment with. I'm excited about. So all in all, some pretty cool stuff. Looking forward to a new voiceover tool that's in the works. And uh, this is the NAB reveal. There's a lot more features, but I'll be digging into it and show you more soon.